I did notice that some of you have been uh, just been introduced to Madhubani. Some of you have been into different kinds of art forms before. And uh, it was before we talk about Madhubani or anything else, I'm going to show you a couple of images. These images will help you understand what kind of thing is it that we are talking about. So if you notice this work, you see a complete rural touch to it, right? You would notice a certain set of color combinations that we have used. You would notice a certain set of patterns that we have used in these. And uh, with, with, without much ado, I'm going to show you the different sizes of paintings also that you can look at. If you kind of understand here in this part, the colors that we have used are very countryside colors, nothing which is a very contemporary kind of a color, a very old fashioned conventional countryside kind of color colors that we've used. And if you notice the patterns here in these areas, there are three ways in which we fill the spaces, either by patterns or by colors or by adding, adding motifs in between. Right. You can contemporize it a little bit and read, reach to something like this. Why did I show you all of these things? So Madhubani painting is a folk art. It is an indigenous art which is believed to have originated in Mithilanchal. Mithilanchal refers to the Maithili speaking region. Parts of that in, are in India, in Bihar. Parts of that are in Nepal. So the folk uh, story goes like this, that when Ram and Sita, they were getting married, Sita's father said that I want my entire kingdom to be painted in an art form wherein I can take a lot of pride and showcase it to the bridegroom's side that this is how my kingdom looks like. This is how the life looks like, the nature, the pride in nature, the life, the rural life there, the way, you know, they, the people take uh, you know, a lot of pride in their rituals, the kind of culture that we have, the kind of lifestyle that we have, our faith and our mythology, and everything can be conveyed to others or to the groom side, pride groom side, and which is why this entire art form, if you have noticed what I was showing you, they have a few things in common and all of them are rooted back to the origin. So when you see Madhubani painting, you would notice Ram Sita Varmala, Radha Krishna, which is about celebration of love, uh, Parvati and Shiva. Parvati and Shiva is about union. You would notice birds, plants, animals, lots of things about auspiciousness and about nature. You would see rituals. So everything connects back to the origin of the painting. And this is how you devise what kind of subject you should be picking for Madhubani painting. Right. And the colors, what kind of colors do we use when I'm working on it, when we are working together, I will tell you more about it. And there are a lot of tips and tricks and ways of identifying the art, different ways in which you make the patterns. And all of them are related with, you know, how it has been, how the evolution of this art form has has been done. So what we will do is we will take a paper with a drawing sheet and we will make something circular for ourselves so that we define the area within which we will make our work. For this, I'm going to use a circular coaster. You can use anything which is circular around you for that first circle in your drawing sheet, a small sized. Uh, Rashi, we can change the spotlight. Yes, sure, ma'am. Okay. So a quick thumbs up from all of you that are you able to see ma'am's workstation? And you can let me know here in the chat box. Are you able to see it clearly? A quick response from all of you. We are 65 people in the house and a welcome to all of you. And I hope you all are going to enjoy the session again. Quickly, quickly, all of you can say a yes over here. And that is the only mode of way we are communicating. So, ma'am, if you can once for all clear what are the materials required, we had a question in the chat box. All right. So for this workshop, we are going to use a pencil and eraser. Any quality of pencil and eraser would be fine. We would be using a black pen. So I'm going to use a micron pen size zero 03. It's not compulsory for you to use a micron pen. You can use any black pen for today. I will tell you the stationery that you should be having. Uh, for today, you can use any black pen for your work mm -hmm. and any medium of coloring. If you have sketch pen, brush pen, uh, if you have acrylic paint, poster color, all of these things are fine. Or, or even, uh, you know, uh, these pencil colors, this is also fine for today. I'll tell you how it is to be done and I'll be demonstrating you using acrylic paint. 
So I will be using acrylic paint for this, but it is okay if you don't have that. So I was telling you that the origin of the art form itself plays a key role when it comes to the subject of my work, right? And I did mention you that we choose a lot of subjects from nature also, something that conveys love, something that conveys nature, something that conveys celebration of life. And from that, we are going to make two birds for our work. This is the head. I will just make the outer structure so that you can take it up from there. This is the direction for me. So there are two birds that we have started off with. Everyone, you can start working. This is the head and the body. The subject that we have chosen is love. So we have made two birds in order to show that union. Now, when we are making Madhubani painting, one thing that is going to be an integral part of our work is one thing that is going to uh, say some message here in the chat box. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. So one thing that is going to be an integral part of your work is double line instead of single line. What does that mean? It means every time you are using a stroke in your work, every time, say, you are making a bird, for example, it's not going to be just one line. It is going to be double line everywhere. Instead of one, it's going to be two. Now, what do you think? Why do we paint double line in Madhavani art? You can write it down in the chat box. Why instead of one line, we use double line in Madhavani painting? Everywhere you would notice this, be it the border, be it the patterns, be it the outer side of the elements, everywhere you would notice that it's double line at the end. Why do you think so? Highlight, okay. Highlight, okay. What else? I'm using a fine liner for this work. And I'll answer that question, of course. I want you all to first uh, think about it and then I'll answer. So I'm using a fine liner for this work. Anything where you are making something intricate, to start off with that art, you can use fine liner. Fine liners are really good quality pens and good for art in general. Even mandala, doodle, or zentangles and art. For all of these, we recommend uh, fine liners. And I'm using the brand called Micron. M-I-C-R-O-N, you can read this here, Micron. The size is 03. 03 size is the closest to the regular writing pens that we get. Like if you're using a ballpoint pen or an edge gel pen, it is going to be similar to that, this size, which is why we are going with 03 today. So like I told you, instead of one line, it's going to be double line and that's what you are doing right now. And just the outer lining. So when you choose a subject which is in line with the origin, true to the scope of the painting, you first make the outer lining of what your work would look like, right? From there, rest of the things start. But first you will have to demarcate, you will have to mark that. Double line everywhere, so I'm making a double line here also. Now, what kind of double line should you be making? The finest quality of work will have the lines close to each other. The closer the lines, the better is the quality. And while making these lines, we shouldn't lift the hand much. There shouldn't be a lot of breaks when you are making these lines. Not in the form of shading. So I suggest that when you're doing this thing, go a little slow. And for now, today, it is time constrained, so I can understand. And we, of course, don't have the luxury of time today. So for today, it's OK. But in general, you should understand that how you should be able to make these lines really well is by going slow initially. And gradually, you will get a hang of it. Since they are facing each other, I am going to make the beak also in that manner. towards each other. 
we don't do double line in the beak. The reason for that is if you're making different kinds of birds and if, if you're making a painting where there are like hundreds of birds, you can't be doing double lining to the beak every time. So we don't do double lining usually in the beak and the feet. They are very small in size and doing a double line might end up jeopardizing or uh, negatively affecting your overall, uh, overall painting, which is why we don't do that. Once your outer structure is ready, then you start with rest of the add-ons. There is one thing that I usually talk about in Madhubani painting. That is, you should always simplify things here. One typical feature or characteristic of this painting is it is something which is always two-dimensional. It is not 3D. You don't apply the concepts of 3D. It is 2D always. There is no concept of shading. There is no concept of shadow. Nothing. It's two-dimensional. Simple, basic. So what I usually say is think like a child and paint like a fine artist. If a child was to paint the, a bird, Usually, they would break it down into smaller sections like the face and the, and the body and the tail and the feet and the beak, right? And that is what you are also going to do. You made the head, you made the body, you made the beak, you will make the feet here. Simple. Just the way you used to do it in your childhood, same thing. I'm just quickly gonna mark the outer circle that we have made. If you notice, even if there is a break, we've got to do it very in a very smooth manner. When you lift your pen, you you know you make it like a shadow here and then lift your pen so that when you restart. You don't mark a knot or something here. So it should not be visible that there is a break. It should be smooth. We, when we started, I told you that mark this outlining, right? We could have done that in any way, right? We could have made that as a square also, or a triangle also, or a, or a rectangle also, or maybe we could not have marked. Why did we take a circle? So basically, we don't use any tools in Madhubani painting. We don't use a compass. We don't use a scale. We don't use anything. So if I had to, if I would have told you to make a square or something, you would have needed a scale at least, right? And I'm talking about majority of us who are not from art background. And that is a little difficult, a tricky part, not difficult, but a tricky part. So easiest way to make it was the circle. Now, second thing is, why do we need to mark the outlining altogether? We do that because we don't leave empty spaces in Madhubani painting. And which is why we need to define the area within which we will make our work, okay? Now you've made the body, the tail, the beak, and the head. I'm going to mark the uh, not the tail, but the feet. So I'm, not, I'm now going to mark the tail of the bird. Similarly, for the other one also. I want all of you to keep one rough sheet in front of you. So, so that when we are talking about a concept, you can write it down. So when it was introduced, this particular art was uh, you know, started, it was practiced by women in the countryside, in the rural area. And the best way, people quality kya hone chahiye, batati So when uh, it was started off, the best way to make the patterns was to take inspiration from the most easily available signs, available patterns, right? 
And the most easily available patterns are the geometric patterns. So when you look at this work, since it is from the rural India, by practiced by people who did not have access to art education at all, needed a lot of exposure. And we are talking about something very simple, something wherein you don't add any complexity as such. So the patterns that we use here are derived from geometric shapes like circle, square, triangle, lines, all of these basic shapes, dots, Right. So use a rough sheet where you can write this down, mention fundamental shapes and write whatever we just talked about. Simple geometric shapes like dot, line. When you are making line, this pattern of making lines equally placed. This is going to be something that you are going to use quite a lot. And the lower the distance between them, the finer is the quality. It should be parallel and with less distance between them. Since you are making lines, you can use hatches. Hatches are uh, lines placed in opposite directions. Circle. If you are using circle, you definitely can use a semicircle. And if you can use a semicircle, you can change it as per your design and elongate it a little bit, you know, make that a little long. So you get this kind of a shape, which we use quite a lot in our designs. You use triangles, square, this kind of shape is used quite a lot because this is just an inspiration from the circle itself, an arch basically. Placing them together, need not be three in number. It can be any number, but whatever you have chosen, like if you have chosen seven or nine or five or two, it should be the same. Everywhere it should be the same. Symmetry is really important. So I hope you have jotted down this dot, lines, hatches, circle, semicircle, triangle, square, the most basic geometric shapes. So Using all of these things, what we are going to do is we are going to divide the base that we have made or add designs to our overall element, right? I did mention to you right now that, no, uh, primarily, I'm not sure if you're referring to the outermost or which one you are referring to. What did I do? I just used, no, for eyes, it's just freehand circle. I use this one so that we can make this design here. Basically, these are elongated semicircles. And since you have to do double line in overall Madhubani painting, you have done double line here too. Both of them is is a couple that you are making, right? So this will also have the same thing. Double line. In Hindi, we call this as kalgi. This part that you place on the top of a bird is called kalgi. It is a colloquial term that we use. Once you have made the overall thing, you divide it. Divide it in a way that you are able to make your designs inside. Even if you are, sorry, even if you are making, even if you are dividing it, you should be doing double line. Because 
basically you are adding more patterns to it madhubani is nothing if it does not have its patterns patterns are the life and the soul of the overall art same thing on the other one also is this the only way in which a bird can be made no there are many ways in which you can make the bird all that matters is the fact that it has to be two dimensional there are a few typical ways in which we usually make the birds where you oversimplify it and uh, the head has to be there the body has to be there the tail has to be there and the kalki has to be there now how do you place them or in what shape do you place them is going to be your choice except for the conventional ways yes finally so if this is the leg as a child just the baby used to make the legs of the birds is what you have done when it comes to pattern making you will take inspiration from all the fundamental patterns that you have learned and that is what we are going to do here also what i am doing right now is called kachni k a c h n i it could have been vertical line also it can be slanting line also but whatever you choose on one side it should be the same on the other too kachni is kachna kachna line kachna the hindi word kachna to make to draw koi design kachna so you are drawing and that is what it means literally that is what it means why did we make these two patterns on both the sides could we not have made one thing here and the other thing here we could have but because they are color couple right teacher yes that is correct however and i appreciate that but uh, what i am trying to say is if we are making the pattern here why did i choose pattern a and pattern a on both the sides of it the reason for doing that is if you notice when i was showing you the designs when you make a pattern in madhubani art you try to bring in some kind of cohesiveness in your design some kind of grouping in your design right and for this kind of grouping you usually place them either in alternate fashion like ab ab or you make them together in a way that you know even if there are three four designs like here if you notice this part kachni yellow kachni red kachni base orange sorry kachni orange kachni red kachni orange kachni red basically it's a pattern that you have made right so this kind of a thing is very typical to madhubani where you try to bring in some kind of uh, relation in the designs you have already learned this pattern right now and i'm going to apply the same thing here I am sorry to disturb. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yes. If you see here, I will not be able to see your screen right now. I'm sorry about that. Oh, is it okay? Okay. Okay. Um, I can just explain you then. Um, below the Kachni design, where you have given this spiral kind of things, mm -hmm. I do not have much space in both side of the. Uh, I mean, in both the birds, like. in one bird i can but in another bird bird i can't so is there any other design that i can put into that hmm. so that hmm. it can be let same? it be don't don't put anything there then just let okay. it be so uh, ha, what you will do is when we are adding color whatever color you add to this part in the leftover hmm. space just add that color 
Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay. I'm doing once again the same thing, but hatches this time in your circles that I have taken here. Basically, if you notice, we are trying to fill the spaces in either in one of the three ways, just by patterns or empty space where I'm going to put colors or by mixing color and motif. Motif refers to small, small designs, very small designs and small and same designs placed equally in order to cover a large section. I did mention this part to all of you that in this particular section or in anything where you are trying to make your designs, you can use the concept of AB, AB, right? Or alternate designs. So I'm trying to keep that concept alive. And the same thing is being applied in this part where one section is going to be Kachni, second, left, Kachni, left. If you notice, the direction of my work is constant. The direction of patterns that I'm making, it is constant. It is just to ensure there is symmetry in my work. And since the other bird is a mirror image, I've tried to keep that as much as possible. There is a certain sense of rawness or crudeness to folk art, and we keep that essence alive not trying to overdo anywhere. Is it, uh, is it um, possible for you to drop your question in the chat box? Yes. Okay, perfect. Then I'll take it from there itself then. Uh, Rashi, I will need uh, your help to read out the messages for me. Mm. I think yes, there are sure, quite a few messages that we have not been able to read. Uh, sure, ma'am. I'll just read out them. Okay. In the background, I've just made a branch here. While coloring with a field figure, the sound and double line in the branch also, we'll make leaves around that. Yes, Rashi, over to you now. So, ma'am, uh, we have a question from Pradhanya that we have to draw double lines on the on that triangle uh, dealing on the board. Hmm. You are talking about this part, I guess. Yes. So we we do make double line almost everywhere, but at places like I gave you the example of the beak and the feet. At places where you think the double line is going to take away the charm or it's going to be difficult, you might avoid also. So it is a subjective thing that in case by any chance, the double line is going to you know, create a lot of confusion or it might be difficult to pull it off, then we kind of leave it. Otherwise we try to do that. So now what do you have drawn? I've drawn a branch here in this part and I'm trying, I'm doing the same thing of Pattern and color, pattern and color. That's what we are doing here. These are the leaves. There are many ways of making the leaves. We have chosen one of them. If you notice the direction of Kachni in all of them is the same. So pick one branch at a time. And all the Kachni that you do there will share the same direction unless otherwise intended.
since we don't usually leave empty spaces, I'm also marking motifs here. Notice that they are organized properly, not randomly placed. So the base of our work is now ready and we would now need to color them. So for coloring, I will be using acrylic paint. You are free to use any medium of coloring for today. Starting off with red color. Now the colors, what kind of colors do we use? In um, excuse me, ma'am. Can mm -hmm. you just spare two minutes, please? Uh, yes, please tell me. Uh, no, as in, um, I, need, I want to complete the uh, drawing. I understand. However, considering the time constraint, I might have to. Oh, okay. uh, what I will do is, uh, once the painting is over, when it's completed, then I will be sharing it in the community channels. So okay. in case, uh, I in have another doubt also. Uh, mm. Like in the branches, uh, in between them, have you drawn slanting lines only? Mm. Yes, I have drawn slanting lines on lines. Only. Okay, okay. Thank you. Welcome. And again, requesting everybody to put your questions in the chat box. I am using I'm using a round brush, and the size is oh, one second. It's four. The size the size is five for this round brush, and. Uh, the color that I'm choosing right now is going to be vibrant. Why vibrant? Since the painting originally starts from, you know, celebration of marriages and all, celebration and about joy, about all of these things, which is happy, happy, right? So that vibrant nature will always be conveyed in the painting, which is why when that is number one, which is why we choose all, the, you know, all those bright colors only. And second two, the color palette that you are going to choose will be in line with that in the conventional world. So if you walk by the village and you, the kind of colors that you see, different shades of brown, different shades of green, red, yellow, orange, green, blue. So all of these colors will find their way in the painting. And very bright, very happening, very happy kind of uh, overall emotion attached with the painting. Uh, if you all have questions, please drop it in the chat box. Uh, Rashi, is there anything that I have missed out on? Any questions that I have missed out on? Uh, no, ma'am. As of now, we are good to go, I guess. Achha. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So what medium of colors do we use for Madhubani painting? We are free to use any medium of color if we are starting off. Uh, Priyanka, we did cover this part. I guess you joined a little late. So when we are painting Madhubani art, there are two ways in which we proceed. One as a professional or one and one as a journey towards learning first. If this is a journey in which you are just trying to understand the concept because you appreciate art, then your overall journey becomes very different. If it is something wherein you want to continue as being a professional in this field or apply the concepts of Madhubani in your other profession, like as in fashion designing or in your textile designing, or maybe you are into something handcrafted work, or maybe you are into handmade stationeries or anything or any, everything. Or maybe you are an artist and you want to club a few art forms together. So depending on the purpose, you will take a call on the medium and the base. So if it is being done for professional purpose, then we have, we either go by natural pigments or with acrylic paint. Natural pigments have their own uh, limitation in terms of, you know, how do you procure them? How do you store them? How, where, how much, uh, how, where do you actually live? And if you are able to source them from the rural area. So all of these things make it a little difficult in terms of procuring natural pigments. So we in the urbanized world, we usually go by acrylic paints and the color palette that we choose from acrylic is in line with the color pigments that you can naturally make. So anything which is contemporary like metallic colors of golden, silver, bronze, 
purple, purple color, for example, turquoise color, for example. We don't use these kind of color of, of paintings, uh, of paint, and we try to stick by the color palette, which exhibits the rural setup. We don't usually use watercolor Priyanka because watercolor is difficult to tame and in Madhubani painting, precision in your work is required. So which Pitcher, is- Are right. you using red color now? I'm using red color, yes. Okay. When it comes to the types of Madhubani painting, somebody asked this question in the group. There are five categories of Madhubani painting. Uh, Rashi, if you could just help me write it down in the chat box, please. Uh, yes, so, ma'am, sure. Kachni, K A C H N I, Bhalmi, B H A R A N I, Godna, G O D H N A, Tantrik, T A N T R I K, and Kobar, K O H B A R. The last one is Kobar. K O H B A R. Yeah. So K for Kolkata. Yeah. yeah, here in uh, the chat box, I've dropped, uh, I've dropped all the uh, five types of Madhubani. You all can note it down. Thank you so much. Instead of red, can we use any other color? Yes, you can. But usually for Kalgi, we use red color. Uh, yeah. uh, request yeah, one second. Okay, uh, go ahead. I mean, type of Madhubani are uh hold on let me let me complete that part and i'll come to that part this question okay. so uh when you are i will answer all your questions yes 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 i will so uh when we are kind of you know picking our color palette for certain sections the color is defined like in kalgi we usually use red color only for the beak we use red color now, since we were using red color for all these sections, and I want this painting to be as vibrant and from the countryside as possible, red being the color of love, we are using red color primarily at most of the places. You are free to use any other color. However, for Kalgi and for Beak, you will be using red color. For rest of the places, you can use any other color. Next thing, when what kind of painting we are working on right now? To answer that question, I'll first have to explain to you the categories. So there are five categories, Kachni, Bharni, Godna, Tantric, and Kumbar. When your entire painting is made using patterns and with a major maximum of two colors, 95% of the times one color only, sometimes two colors. If that is the case, and none of the places in your painting has any color filling done, it is called a Kachni painting. Kachni painting as in using Kachni patterns only, your entire painting has been done. When you are filling colors in it, no matter how many colors, how many palettes, uh, how, how many colors in your palette, it is a Bharani painting. If predominantly your work has colors, it becomes a Bharani painting. So what you are doing right now is a Bharani Chitrakari. Chitrakari is doing a certain painting. So it's a, it's a Bharani Chitrakari. Godna, Tantric, and Kumbar are different uh, segments which talk about the intention of your work. Godna is basically modern day tattoo. So this particular segment, Godna painting, de de was derived from tattoo making itself and typically uh, is you know, repetition-based design. So you have one circular painting in which uh, there are many layers that you draw, can be done using colors, can be done only by using ink, uh, using patterns only. So it can be Kachni or Bharni, and the concept is nature-based. Tantric on extreme side of faith and Kobar is a ritual. It's basically a ritual in which all the walls of the newly married couple are painted in an art form, in which everything auspicious as per the belief system of Mithilanjal is painted. And it is believed that all gods, goddesses, and everything which is auspicious, the nature, all of them are coming, coming to, together in order to bless the newly married couple. And which is why this is more of a ritual than a painting. It is done on walls, on fabric, on wooden plank, or on paper also, maybe chart paper sized, but usually quite big in size because you've got to accommodate a lot of things in this. Okay. So you are doing uh, 
Bharni painting, Bharni Chitrakari. Now I will take a short pause from, from what we have been doing. And uh, we have almost completed with a certain sections left, just a very few sections left now. So I'm now handing it over to Rashi. Rashi, if you would like to take over for a while, we can take a break now. Uh, yes, sure, ma'am. So I hope you guys are enjoying it till here quickly. If I can have a response.